السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد إن شاء الله today بإذن الله تعالى Saturday the first of ربيع الأول 1437 matching the 12th of December 2015 and uh, this first part of our session we are doing the book الداء والدواء the disease and the cure الجواب الكافي the sufficient reply لمن سأل عن الدواء الشافي uh, for the one who asked for the healing cure and last time Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahmatullah, explained that from the evil consequences of sins and disobediences is that they will expel the person from the circle of Al-Ihsan, uh, perfection in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the sins are a cause leading the person to miss uh, a lot of goodness. Also, he explained that the sins and disobediences, they are the cause leading to weakening the heart. They weaken the heart and hold him back from this walk, from his journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, he says that from the evil consequences of sins and disobediences, min uqubati dhunub, أنها تزيل النعم وتحل النقم that sins and disobediences they remove favors and bounties and they warrant and they bring about نقم evils and problems so Good things are removed and bad things happen to the person who fall into committing sins. فما زالت عن العبد عن العبد نعمة إلا بذم ولا حلت به نقمة إلا بذم. So no favor or bounty gets removed from a person except because of a sin, and there is no problem, no calamity, no. Uh, problem that befalls him except because of a sin. وَلَا رُفِعَ بَلَاءٌ إِلَّا بِتَوْبَةٌ Trial, calamities, trials and calamities, uh, they are not removed except by repentance. كما قال علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه, as Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه said, ما نزل بلاء إلا بذنب ولا رفع إلا بتوبة. No calamity that has come down except because of a sin. And it is not removed except the calamity is not removed except because of a repentance. Except because of a repentance. And this meaning has preceded earlier in the beginning of the book. وَقَدْ قَالَ تَعَالَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Surah Ash-Shura, Ayah 30 Whatever of a calamity that befalls you, then it is because of what your own hands have earned, and Allah pardons much. Also he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُوا مُغَيِّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَى قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 53, it says what means that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have changed a favor that he favored people with 
up until they change that which is within themselves. So again, Surah Al-Anfal 53. If Allah gave you a favor, then you change, then Allah will change. But if he gives you a favor and you are thankful, then that favor will remain. You are thankful, obedient by obedience to Allah, then it will not change. فأخبر الله تعالى الله informed أنه لا يغير نعمته التي أنعم بها على أحد حتى يكون هو الذي يغير ما بنفسه الله informed in this ayah that he does not change his favor that he has favored anyone of his servants up until he that servant himself is the one who changes what is within himself فيغير طاعة الله بمعصيته وشكره بكفره so this person he changes he changes and replaces the obedience of Allah with his disobedience and he changes his offering of thanks his showing of gratitude شكر he replaces that he changes it and replaces it with ingratitude and he not being thankful he also changes up until he changes the causes of Allah's pleasure. He changes those causes and replaces them with causes that bring Allah's wrath, Allah's anger. If he changes, the matter will be changed for him. جزاء وفاقا جزاء a reward وفاقا that is perfectly matching وما ربك بظلام للعبيد and your lord is never an oppressor to the servants فإن غير المعصية بالطاعة غير الله عليه العقوبة بالعافية so if he changes the disobedience replaces it with obedience then Allah changes for him the punishment and replaces it for him with well-being he also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the humiliation and replaces it with honor and might Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said surah al-ra'd ayah number 11 إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم وإذا أراد الله بقوم سوءا فلا مرد له وما لهم من دونه من وال سورة الرعد آية نمبر 11 الله سبحانه وتعالى says here This is uh, Surat uh, Ar-Ra'd, Ayah number 11. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means. Verily, Allah will not change the good condition of a people as long as they do not change their state of goodness themselves. That is by committing sins and by being ungrateful and disobedient to Allah. But when Allah wills a people's punishment, there can be no turning back of it. And they will find besides him no protector. They will find besides him no protector. The brothers were asking about the word Mawlana. You have Mawla. And you have wali, and you have wal, walin, right? Here, all of them are uh, coming from the same root, which is closeness uh, leading to patronage and protection, right? So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, as you can see the meaning from the Noble Quran, that's why we always say that is the best translation, the best translation Allah knows best 
that you can depend on if you are using a translation of the meaning of the Quran, use the Noble Quran by Dr. Taqid Din Hilali and uh, Muhsin Khan. He goes on to say, وَفِي بَعْضِ الْآثَارِ الْإِلَهِيَةِ In some reports that are referred to Allah, like as a statement of Allah. A report taken from Allah knows best, the people of the past. And uh, we don't have a chain uh, for this narration. It says that Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, the Rabb, tabaraka wa ta'ala, that he said, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي by my might and my greatness. لا يكون عبد من عبيدي على ما أحب ثم ينتقل عنه إلى ما أكره إلا انتقلت له مما يحب إلى ما يكره. This is a report that just repeating basically the same meaning. It says, by my might and greatness, uh, no servant of mine who was upon something that I love, then he moves away from that to that which I dislike, except that I, I will move from, I will move for him, yani, from things that he loves to things that he dislikes. وَلَا يَكُونُ عَبْدٌ مِنْ عَبِيدِ عَلَى مَا أَكْرَهُ ثُمَّ يَنْتَقِلُ عَنْهُ إِلَى مَا أُحِبْ إِلَّا انْتَقَلْتُ لَهُ مِمَّا يَكْرَهُ Ila ma yuhib, and no servant of uh, my servants who is upon that which I dislike, then he moves away from that to that which I like, which I love, except that I will also move for him, yani move his situation, change his situation from that which he dislikes to that which he likes. So Yani in other words, having this meaning, you, 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 choose, your, you choose your fate <laughs> in this sense, right? You choose your uh, consequence based on this. If you uh, disobey Allah, Allah will, uh, you make him angry and you do things of his dislike that he dislikes, then that's what will happen to you. He will change things on you. And the opposite is true. If you repent and obey, then Allah will change your situation of dislike to a situation that you like and love. He mentions here a line of poetry. It says, وَلَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ الْقَائِلِ He says, the one who said these lines of poetry, he has uh, done well يعني, in his line of poetry. It says, إِذَا كُنْتَ فِي نِعْمَةٍ فَرْعَهَا فَإِنَّ الْمَعَاصِي تُزِيلُ النِّعَمْ If you have a favor, if you have a bounty, then take good care of it. For surely sins remove favors. وَحُطْهَا بِطَاعَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ فَرَبُّ الْعِبَادِ سَرِيعُ النِّقَمْ Surround that favor, that bounty. Surround it with obedience. To the Lord of the servants, for surely the Lord of the servants, he is swift in vengeance. He is swift in punishment. Beware of oppression. How much uh, you are able or as much as you are able. Stay away from oppressing, tyranny towards others, for surely oppressing the servants has a very severe end, very evil, severe consequence. وَسَافِرْ بِقَلْبِكَ بَيْنَ الْوَرَى لِتُبْصِرَ آثَارَ مَنْ قَدْ ظَلَمْ Take a journey with your heart. Take a journey with your heart between the people, between the creation. So that you will see the effects, the traces, the consequences that happened to those who oppressed, who oppressed others. فَتِلْكَ مَسَاكِنُهُمْ بَعْدَهُمْ شُهُودٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا تُتَّهَمْ So 
these are or those are their homes, the places they, they used to live, their dwellings. These are their dwellings after them. Those dwellings, those dwellings are witnesses over them and they're not to be accused. Yani, uh, those places that they used to live in who, uh, that were destroyed because of their sins, these are actual evidence, actual like witnesses, witnessing on them. And these witnesses, they do not lie. Right? They cannot be accused of lying. La tutaham. If you are using the same copy uh, on page 114, uh, it says uh, with the fatha on the ta, it should be a dhamma, Allah knows best. Wala uh, tutaham. Right? They cannot be accused. Those dwellings of theirs. And if you remember that uh, a few weeks ago, he mentioned, alayhi rahmatullah, the hadith uh, of the Messenger, وسلم, when they passed by the place of, of uh, Thamud, and he was saying, you should pass uh, crying. Uh, do not enter those places except crying. And even uh, they made a dough with water that they fetched from that area. So he said, don't consume that. And he gave the dough that was made, he gave it as food for the animals, right? And he mentioned that in the evil effects of the sins and disobediences and that they corrupt even the surrounding, they corrupt the environment, sins and <laughs> disobediences. This point has passed before. He says, وَمَا كَانَ شَيْءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَضَرَّ مِنَ الظُّلْمِ وَهُوَ الَّذِي قَدْ قَصَمْ There was nothing that was more heart, uh, harmful, that is, to them, nothing harmful to them more than oppression. And it, oppression actually, is the one that broke them up. وَهُوَ الَّذِي قَدْ قَصَمْ فَكَمْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ جِنَانٍ وَمِنْ فَكَمْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ جِنَانٍ وَمِنْ قُصُورٍ وَأُخْرَى عَلَيْهِمْ أَطَمْ He said how much of gardens that they have left and mansions also that they have left and even other than that, other than the gardens and the mansions, other than this, other issues يعني, uh, happened to them that are far worse and far severe than just leaving these enjoyments in the gardens and the mansions. Things that are far more severe happen to them. Atam, you know, we passed by Surah An Nazi'at on Fridays. Faida ja'at kubra. Right? So, atam, this one is in the superlative. Tamma, atam. Right? So, this is like more like overwhelming something that completely covers you and destroys you. So he says here, the other things that happen to them are even far more overwhelming, far more severe. Salu bil jahimi. These are the things that are far worse. Salu bil jahimi naim. Yani worse than just leaving their homes and gardens and mansions that they used to live in. They were burnt, they, were, they, they burnt into or by the flames of fire, a fire of hell. The enjoyment and the bliss, they missed that, they lost it. Whatever they achieved of things of uh, enjoyment, it was nothing but a dream. Like a dream. Whatever they got was just like a dream. Right? And then now they are going to uh, suffer the consequences of what they have done. Next is from the evil consequences, the punishments of sins. ما يلقيه الله سبحانه من الرعب والخوف في قلب العاصي فلا تراه إلا خائفا مرعوبا 
He said, whatever Allah throws into the heart, subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he throws into uh, the heart of a sinner of fear and terror. So you do not see him, the sinner, you do not see him except afraid and terrified. فَإِنَّ الطَّاعَةَ حِصْنُ اللَّهِ الْأَعْظَمُ For surely obedience to Allah is the greatest fort of Allah, the greatest source of protection. الَّذِي مَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْآمِنِينَ مِنْ عُقُوبَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ This uh, obedience is the greatest fort of Allah. The one who enters it, he will be from those who are secure in this worldly life and the next life. Amina, Amina, Mu'min, right? Amin, he is safe and secure. وَمَنْ خَرَجَ عَنْهُ أَحَاطَتْ بِهِ الْمَخَاوِفِ مِنْ كُلِّ جَانِبِ The one who exits from this fort of Allah, the fort of obedience, ta'a, then the fears will surround him from every side, from every corner. فَمَنْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهَ انْقَلَبَتِ الْمَخَاوِفُ فِي حَقِّهِ أَمَانًا The one who obeys Allah then issues uh, of fear, matters that he fears, then they will turn in his regard, they will turn into uh, matters or source of safety and security. وَمَنْ عَصَاهُ انْقَلَبَتْ مَآمِنُهُ مَخَاوِفْ And the one who disobeys Allah, things and places and matters that uh, are of safety and security, they turn against him now and they turn into matters, things, sources of fear. Yani something that you have as a safety and security for you, it turns against you and becomes something that will make you, that will instill fear and terrify you. فَلَا تَجِدُ الْعَاصِي إِلَّا وَقَلْبُهُ كَأَنَّهُ بَيْنَ جَنَاحَيْ طَائِرٍ He says you do not find the disobedient person except that his heart is as if as it is between the two wings of a bird. Right? A very shaky and very much afraid. In حَرَّكَةِ الْرِيحُ الْبَابَ قَالَ جَاءَ الطَّلَبِ if the wind moves the door, he says, oh, those who are after me, they came, they arrived. Ja'at talab. At talab, you know, those who are coming, looking for you, seeking you, to take you, <laughs> right? So if the wind moves the door, يعني, there is nothing to fear, it's just the move. The wind moved the door. He would say, those who are after me, they came to get me, right? وَإِنْ سَمَعَ وَقْعَ قَدَمٍ خَافَ أَنْ يَكُونَ نَذِيرًا بالعطب. If he hears the sound of footsteps, then he, we, uh, he would be afraid that this is now a warning sign of destruction. Somebody is walking or they are coming to hit me, to hurt me. يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ كُلَّ صَيْحَةٍ عَلَيْهِ He thinks that every scream is against him. Right? And he says, وَكُلَّ مَكْرُوهٍ قَاصِدًا إِلَيْهِ Every matter of dislike, then it is intending him, is coming for him. فَمَنْ خَافَ اللَّهَ آمَنَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So the one who fears Allah, Allah will secure him from everything. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَخَفِ اللَّهَ أَخَافَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ And the one who does not fear Allah, Allah will make him afraid of everything. He mentions a line of poetry here, which says, لَقَدْ قَضَى اللَّهُ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ مُذْ خُلِقُوا أَنَّ الْمَخَاوِفَ وَالْإِجْرَامَ فِي قَرَانِ He says in this line of poetry that surely Allah decreed between the people since they were created that fears and crimes, right? Fear and crime, إجرام. Crimes or uh, criminality, being a criminal. They are in one company, right? They are companions, two companions of one another. 
they share their partners with together fear and crime right and it is true you find someone who is uh, tyrannical and so much of an oppressor and you know a tyrant and then <laughs> he's so scared within himself he has to have those uh, you know, troops and helpers and soldiers and all of that, you know, to, to protect himself, right? وَمِنْ عُقُوبَاتِهَا From the punishments of the sins أَنَّهَا تُوْقِعُ الْوَحْشَةَ الْعَظِيمَةَ فِي الْقَلْبِ That it will have severe gloominess in the heart. Wahsha is this gloominess, darkness in the heart caused by you feel feeling alienated, being a foreigner, being strange. Right? Things, you know, are against you. You know, you are lonely. You are. This is the sense of wahsha, right? The opposite of that is uns. When you find company and you are comfortable, you know, you feel you're not alone, right? You're not alone. So wahsha is this alienation. This strange feeling that you're alone and you're you know scared all alone by yourself there is nothing nobody you're a foreigner you're a stranger alienated the opposite is the feeling of uns which is this sense of uh, affection sense of comfort sense that there are people around you you're not alone right those those two so he says that Sins and disobediences, they cause great, severe alienation, gloominess in the heart. So the sinner, he finds himself having that state of gloominess, alienation. This alienation, this gloominess is between him and his Lord and between him and the people. And even he says, between him and himself, his own self. The more the sins are committed, the more sins are done, then that sense of alienation, sense of gloominess, it increases. وَأَمَرُّ الْعَيْشِ عَيْشُ الْمُسْتَوْحِشِينَ الْخَائِفِينَ وَأَطْيَبُ الْعَيْشِ عَيْشُ الْمُسْتَأْنِسِينَ He says the most bitter type of living is the life or the living of those who are estranged and alienated, those who live in a gloominess, those who are afraid, مُسْتَوْحِشِينَ خَائِفِينَ وَأَطْيَبُ الْعَيْشِ While the best living is the life of al-musta'nisin, those who are finding peace and comfort and friendliness, uh, an atmosphere of friendliness and comfort, not an atmosphere of loneliness and estrangeness. فَلَوْ فَكَّرَ الْعَاقِلُ وَوَازَنَ بَيْنَ لَذَّةِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ وَمَا تُقِعُهُ فِيهِ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْوَحْشَةِ if the wise person, he will now uh, think and wazana, you know, wazan is the weight. Wazana is you weigh, you weigh between things. So here he says the wise person, he will weigh the affairs. He will make this comparison between the joy the joy of disobedience and what it makes him fall into of fear and alienation. Then he will know the evil, uh, the bad condition that he is in and the great loss that he is in. Right? Ruben, Ruben, that is if you buy a commodity and you sell it but then you sell it for even less than what you bought it for, right? So you, you're losing, right? So if you compare the joy of uh, the disobedience, compare that of the evil effects of this 
feelings of gloominess being alienated and estranged, then you find there is no comparison between the two. He says you will find that you truly lost إذ باع أنس الطاعة وأمنها وحلاوتها بوحشة المعصية وما تجيبه من الخوف والضرر الداعي له. He said because this person he will find himself losing because he sold the comfort of the obedience and its security and its sweetness. He sold that off for the gloominess due to committing a sin and what it necessitates, what, what it warrants of the fear and the harm that will be uh, inflicted upon him because of it or the, the harm that it calls against him. You commit a sin, you are calling harm to come to you. You are calling, telling the harm, come to me and attack me. That's basically what he's saying. كَمَا قِيلْ as it has been said, a line of poetry here. فَإِن كُنْتَ قَدْ أَوْحَشَتْكَ الذُّنُوبُ فَدَعْهَا إِذَا شِئْتَ وَاسْتَأْنِسِي He says in this line of poetry that if sins and disobediences caused you gloominess, caused you this feeling of alienation and strangeness, then leave them then if you wish and come to comfort. Get, you know, this friendly environment that is free from sins, right? This environment or atmosphere of comfort, love and affection, uns, right? وَسِرُّ المسألة, He says the secret behind this issue, أَنَّ الطَّاعَةَ تُوجِبُ الْقُرْبَ مِنَ الرَّبِّ سُبْحَانَهُ That obedience will necessitate getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكُلَّمَا اشْتَدَّ الْقُرْبُ قَوِيَ الْأُنْسِ the more you get closer or the closeness is intensified, then the uns, this feeling of comfort, love, affection, peace, serenity, it will also intensify. He said, and this obedience will guarantee, will necessitate being far away from the Lord, from Allah, and every time the uh, length or the distance increases, then the alienation, the estrangeness, the gloominess will intensify. وَلِهَذَا يَجِدُ الْعَبْدُ وَحْشَةً بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ عَدُوِّهِ لِلْبُعْدِ الَّذِي بَيْنَهُمَا This is why the Sheikh says, the servant, he finds some sort of alienation, sense of like a distance between him and his enemy. That is because of the far distance between them. If you have an enemy, you don't feel, you don't feel good around him, right? Because of this distance that is between you, the moral distance of the uh, enmity. He said, وَإِنْ كَانَ مُلَابِسًا لَهُ قَرِيبًا مِنْ Even if that enemy is like he مُلَابِسًا لَهُ Mingling with him, close to him. He could be very close. Not even your neighbor he live, living with you, <laughs> living you with the same home, your enemy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> save us from that. Right? So although he's so close physically, but then because of this enmity between you, you find this, there is a big distance between you and him. He said, وَيَجِدُ أُنْسًا وَقُرْبًا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ مَنْ يُحِبْ وَإِنْ كَانَ بَعِيدًا عَنْ He finds the person, the servant of Allah, he finds and senses uh, comfort, peace, and closeness between him and the one whom he loves, even if he is very far away from him, even maybe in another country, but he finds him always in his heart, always close, because of the love, right? وَالْوَحْشَةُ سَبَبُهَا الْحِجَابِ Now, why is this alienation, this sense of gloominess? He says, the cause behind that is the hijab, 
the veil, the partition that is being set up. وكلما غلظ غلظ الحجاب زادت الوحشة. Every time the thickness of this veil, of this partition, you have a partition could be just a, a curtain, and you have a partition it could be. <laughs> Uh, يعني just a, a movable, removable, and it could be, <laughs> right, a big wall set up, it could be a concrete. The thicker this wall, this partition, the thicker the partition, كلما غلظ الحجاب, the more this partition, this veil is thick, زادت الوحشة, the gloominess increases. فالغفلة توجب الوحشة. So being in a state of heedlessness, غفله, being unaware, negligent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not on your mind. الغفله, right? This necessitates وحشة, necessitates that sense of gloominess. وأشد منها وحشة المعصية. More severe than the Uh, than the being uh, negligent and heedless of the remembrance of Allah. Worse than that is the wahsha, the gloominess caused by committing a sin, ma'asiyah. Wa ashaddu minha wahsha tu shirki wal kufr. And more severe than this, in terms of gloominess, is the gloominess caused by association of partners in worship with Allah and disbelief. He said, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَحَدًا مُلَابِسًا شَيْئًا مِنْ ذَلِكْ إِلَّا وَيَعْلُوهُ مِنَ الْوَحْشَةِ بِحَسَبِ مَا لَابَسَهُ مِنْهُ You do not find anyone who is involved in any of this, in anything of this, of this sort. يعني غفلة, being negligent and Uh, heedless from the remembrance of Allah or disobedience or the worst of disobedience shirk and kufr you do not find anyone who is involved in any of these then except that then he will have gloominess on him emerging on him according to how much he is involved of that How much he is involved in forgetting the remembrance of Allah. How much involved he is in disobeying Allah. How much involved he is in shirk and kufr. He said, فَتَعْلُوا الْوَحْشَةُ وَجْهَهُ وَقَلْبَهُ فَيَسْتَوْحِشُ وَيُسْتَوْحَشُ مِنْهُ He said that the gloominess covers his face. It surfaces the face. And his heart to a point that he feels a sense of gloominess, strange, estrangeness, alienation. And the people even, they feel that towards him. Even the people around him, they feel this. And he, subhanallah, sometimes I see some people walking, the kuffar, I say, A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan rajeem. You look at the, as if he just got up from the grave. Yeah. He was dead and he just stood up and walking. Really, يعني, their faces, <laughs> they are not good at all. <laughs> he feels that feeling of gloominess and loneliness and strangeness. And even the people feel the same towards him. Yani they don't want to be. They don't want to be around him. <laughs> They'd rather be somewhere else or far away from him, because of this. Either he is far away from remembering Allah, or he is far involved in disobeying Allah, or he is billah, involved in shirk and kufr. Billah. Next, he says that the. Sins and disobediences, they turn the heart away from steadfastness. Inshallah, we will leave this one for next week. As uh, last time we had our time with questions and answers, we did not do our hadith. Inshallah, this time we try to do the hadith 
inshallah we try to finish it all of it inshallah ta'ala so we will stop here this time and